Hi, my name is Frank Straza with the Heritage School of Woodworking. And in this video, I'm going to show you the technique that I use in my everyday working for hand cutting a dovetail. Now, in our video on how to hand cut a dovetail, I'm going to show you some little different techniques. But in this one, I thought I'd just show you the method that I use uh, for cutting a dovetail and how fast you can actually cut a dovetail using this technique. I'm going to start with a um, by actually marking the, uh, the outside here, because I like to do all of my work on the outside. I've got the outside face marked with my face mark. I'm going to set my cutting gauge, which does differ from a marking gauge. The main difference being that a cutting gauge actually has a knife blade in it, and that knife blade scores across the fibers. If you've watched the previous videos that we've done, we talk about the knife cut scoring across the fibers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to score with my cutting gauge on this board all four sides here like this. So now I've got my what I call my baseline there and I'm going to do the same thing on this one just on the two sides. I don't have to do it on the ends because this one is the pin board. I'm going to cut the tails on here. Now I'm going to just cut these by eye of course, it determines how much the customer is paying, which will determine how, how much time I spend laying out the dovetails. But you can actually do a fairly accurate joint totally by eye. So we started by cutting the two outside pieces. I'm going to uh, eyeball the center and move over a little bit and cut the angles just like this. So it looks like I've probably got the spacing off maybe a little bit, but now we're going to come in here with a coping saw and just cut a little bit above the line. This is key here. Just a little bit above the line and cope out the waste. Come in here, we'll cut the, the outside ends off. So if anybody has ever told you that hand cutting dovetails is slow and laborious, you can tell them otherwise. This is actually faster than cutting it with a machine. Of course, if you had multiples to cut with a machine, it might be worth the hour or two that it takes to set up a machine, but as you can see here, I'm halfway done with the joint, or almost halfway done, and most people have barely found their extension cord, let alone the router that it takes. What I'm going to do here is just take my chisel right and it falls right inside that line and we're going to trim right to the baseline. Again, this is the exact technique that I use for cutting dovetails on my furniture. Of course, I do spend a little bit more time laying out the angles and the spacing and such. Now there's the tails. Um, this one's a little bit bigger, but uh, that should not affect the tightness of the joint. What we're going to do here is we're going to put this on here just like so. And what's key here is to mark this with a sharp pencil, a very sharp pencil. So I look at the tip to make sure that no light is reflecting off of the tip. And if the pencil needs to be sharpened, I take a sharp chisel to sharpen the pencil. And that will give me a point that I can actually use, which is very accurate. On hardwoods, I'll actually use a knife, but pine is so um, such that uh, the knife tends to get lost in the fibers of the, of the material. That's the waste part. We're just going to cut on the waste side of the line, straight down, all the way down. and following that line. And this is why you've got to learn how to saw to the line, follow the line and learn how to control the saw. Very loose grip. Same thing here with the coping saw. You'll notice I'm holding it sort of uh, like a golf grip. Of course, I've never, I've never golfed, but it, uh, it seems like the way you're supposed to hold it. Two uh, uh, feet spread out, nice uh, grip like this and just bring it around, follow the line, 
just like this, listening to the tone as you get towards the end. You'll hear the tone change, and right towards the end, I slow the saw down and pop the cut out. Same way here, come around like this. I'm staying above the line, listen to the tone. There it is, there it is, and pop it out. Again, we're a little bit above the line, so we can just take our one-inch chisel and come in here. I can I can hardly see the line, but I can feel the line. Take it and drop it in there. And as long as I'm as long as I've cut about oh let's see a sixteenth or so above the line, um, I, there's no fear of the chisel actually going past the line. Uh, if I'm too far above the line, I'll actually have to make this cut in two passes. So we're going to come back here, and we're feeling that, feeling that, and bring it in like this. Oh, there it is. You can hear it and feel it. And then I'm just going to come in just like so and just work it. I'm angling the cut so that it's cutting to the inside like this. Uh, and again, I do that to uh, ensure that it's not hitting on the, on the inside. There, I'm just cleaning up the base there. Just got some torn fibers right there. And then the moment of truth. We'll take this and it should fit on there. And sometimes it may need a little persuasion better tight than loose. And that's how you cut a tight dovetail there. Nice and tight. You can see it goes up along the baseline, tight on the inside, on the outside, and there on the edges. So I'm going to show you in the next videos on how to cut a dovetail joint using some different techniques, maybe a little bit slower, but we're going to slow down the process to where you can understand how and why these different techniques work. Mm -hmm.